guys and welcome to another one of my two reviews today we are treating ourselves to a 2015 Volkswagen GTI it is the one model that wrote the book and continues to do it today launched more than 30 years ago with one simple idea in mind to offer the enthusiast who couldn't afford a proper sports car an alternative in the hot hatchback segment basically Volkswagen invented the hatchback the hot hatch uh, segment with the GTI back in the 80s but I'm not here to talk about the past or how the Golf has a history of over 40 years no I'm here to talk about the performance version of this uh, generation the Mark 7 GTI what I'm driving today is a 2015 model it is one of the first ones to come out on the market it is owned by an enthusiast who also has a Mazda MX-5 or Miata and he absolutely loves this car before I got behind the wheel I have to admit I was rather reticent with so many good cars in this in this particular segment today it's kind of hard to claim that one of them is the best but then again driving it for a couple of days I realized that there may be some truth to what uh, fans of Volkswagen and GTI altogether are claiming so what do we have here this particular car is the GTI with the competition package now if you were at all interested in the GTI you probably already know that it comes with a 2 liter turbocharged engine that's available on a plethora of models across Volkswagen's uh, varied brands now on the GTI it makes 210 horsepower in standard guys but on this model with the competition package it has 220 horsepower now the bump in power isn't all that noticeable, especially since torque remained the same at 258 pound-feet of torque. But the competition package also brings a couple of other enhancements that make a bigger difference. First of all, I have to mention the limited slip differential up front. This is a front-wheel drive car and you would expect it, since it has so much power going to the front wheels, to be overwhelmed, right? No. With the competition package, the electronic limited slip differential makes all the difference in the world. You do not get any kind of torque steer, which is basically the biggest problem front-wheel drive cars have with a lot of power, of course. You don't get torque steer at all. I didn't notice any kind of torque steer, not in a straight line all out, not in the bends, not going out of the bends, not nowhere, nada, nothing. It is unbelievable how capable this uh, this little diff is. It's no wonder then that the uh, Seat Leon, which is uh, a brand, a model made by Seat, the Spanish version of Volkswagen, um, it is no wonder that the Cupra 280 managed to post so many records on the Nurburgring. You might want to check that out, it's quite impressive. It's also not surprising that using all this technology, the Club Sport version of the GTI manages to post Nurburgring lap times of under considerably under 8 minutes, which is quite amazing for a day-to-day -day hatch, but we'll get to that a bit later. Another thing the competition package brings is beefier uh, brakes. Those really come in handy when you, you're pushing the car to the limit, and I couldn't notice any kind of uh, brake fade during my time with the car, even though I pushed it to... 10 out of 10 quite a number of times now that said I think you should definitely get be looking for a GTI with a competition package it is worth it other than that I don't think you should get too many options I mean the leather steering wheel and the leather gator are okay but I wouldn't go for the leather seats as this car has the um, tartan seats that Volkswagen offers for a standard are perfectly okay I actually like them more because they they simulate uh, a bit uh, better looking to my eye but of course that's subjective uh, I wouldn't spend money on electric seats on anything just get the competition package the standard car ha comes with a lot of equipment like rear view, rear view camera and uh, climate control and everything you possibly need uh, I have to make a, a, a mention here if you're an audiophile 
if you love listening banging to music uh, in your car you should go for the fender op optional uh, audio system it is quite good on the road the car is absolutely brilliant you get driving modes uh, using a selector near the gear, sh gear shift knob which basically allows you to choose from four different modes you get comfort mode normal mode sport mode and individual mode individual mode allows you to set the settings for the steering the acceleration the dampers and everything manually so let's say you don't want to go in sport mode all the time because the suspension gets too stiff for your liking you can uh, configure it in the, the individual mode so that you get everything in sport mode except the suspension for example there's a couple of options that are, do come in uh, useful I totally recommend uh, um, using uh, all the modes just to see how you deal with each, each of them which one is better for you also you could get the navigation system this car doesn't have it but to be honest nobody really uses it anymore these days because everyone uses their smartphones because the apps are simply better the sunroof I also think is a subjective matter some people like it some people don't you need to know that during hot summer days you won't really be able to use it because sun will basically melt your brain off especially here in, uh, in LA uh, but, but then again, it is a to totally up to you with your car, you should uh, decide which options you should get. Now inside the GTI, there's plenty of room up front and plenty of room in the back for four adults. Now the car I have is a two-door version, which is no longer available in the States. The two-door version makes it a, a bit harder for people to get in the back, especially adults. I tried it earlier, <laughs> didn't really work out. But once you are in the back seat, you have room to be comfortable. Of course, if you're more worried about your passengers, then you should definitely go for the four-door version, but that does come with a weight penalty. Uh, on the road, living with the car day by day, you couldn't ask for anything more. Yes, the bigger uh, rims on the competition package models, which come with 19-inch wheels, might make the ride a bit harsher, but the adaptive dampers compensate for that, so, you won't feel all that, um, how should I say, uncomfortable uh, on your daily routine. On the highway, the car is pretty much silent. There is some road noise coming into the cabin, but it's nothing out of the ordinary. Um, as far as maintenance goes, because that's something people will be interested in, and I'm guessing you are, um, the car is really easy to maintain. You get 32 mpg uh, on the regular on the highway and about 26 inside the, the city but then again it all depends on how you drive this car is really hard to drive slow so that's just a fair warning to you guys you probably won't get the EPA re uh, ratings on your GTI speaking of uh, ratings I totally recommend going for the manual gearbox yes the mpg figures you'll get will be worse and yes, during traffic hours, you will probably curse your life, but you should really go for the manual. Yes, it is slower than the DSG to 100 kilometers an hour, but the difference is so small, it doesn't even matter. Basically, you reach 60 miles an hour in second gear, as you're about to see. is fast and Volkswagen claims that the GTI should take about six six and a half seconds to reach 60 miles an hour that that claim seems to be to be pretty valid I could reach 60 miles an hour in six and a half seconds easily with the manual gearbox so this car is really really fast now by today's standards 220 horsepower might not seem like a terrible lot but it is enough for your daily, daily driving uh, adrenaline rushes if you will sure you could go for the golf r which has 300 horsepower and all-wheel drive and is basically a rocket on wheels but for a lot of people out there the golf r will be too much to handle not everyone is a reincarnated schumacher or a kimi raikkonen so for the uh, basic enthusiast the man that wants to have some fun on curvy canyon roads from time to time the gti will be plentiful it is enough you can also of course 
get it uh, rechipped and get some more power out of, out of the two liter engine under the hood. But then again, the front uh, the front end might get a bit overwhelmed. Yes, you may have the limited slip differential up differential up there, but that can only work so many miracles. It will not save your life if you push it too far. So, um, what are the complaints people have about this car? It has been on the market for quite some time and people got around to driving them for long enough to notice if any issues are repeating themselves and creating a pattern. From what I could gather on online, the, the engine is pretty much bulletproof, the turbo is okay, nobody reported any issues up to 50,000 miles uh, or at least any issues that would be considered out of the ordinary or creating uh, a pattern as I said. However, a lot of people have been complaining about the rear view camera that sometimes just doesn't seem to want to work. Other people have noticed that the infotainment system doesn't really uh, work as uh, you'd expect. What I mean by that is that sometimes it defaults to the 87.7 uh, frequency when you're listening to the radio, just out of the blue. Now that's not necessarily a big issue, but I thought I should mention it. Other than that, no big issues reported by anyone and the car is basically super, super okay in terms of reliability. That said, what don't I like about it? Well, there are a few things, but they're not as evident as you might seem. They're more a thing of personal preference, if you will. The, I'm gonna talk about the manual version because this is the one I'm driving, this is the one I'm recommending for you guys. Uh, the gear shift uh, is absolutely okay. Um, the gators are pretty close uh, to one another. You won't miss a gear, it, the gearbox is precise. However, I don't like the fact that the clutch seems to hook a bit too high for my taste. You have to lift your foot a bit too long before the, the clutch uh, actually uh, starts rubbing. So that's just a pre personal preference. It's not something that would turn you off from buying it. I suggest you go drive one and see for yourself. Also, I don't like the fact that the gas pedal is a bit too much to the right. Now that makes it, uh, that basically makes it a bit harder to rev match uh, whenever you are pushing the car to the limit. Uh, but it's not really a no-go. Uh, the car isn't really a no-go because of that. Not a lot of people do rev matching anyway. So yeah, that's just something I would personally prefer the gearbox, the uh, uh, gas pedal to be a bit more to the left so that I can reach it easier with my right foot when I'm also braking. Once again, that's just subjective. You should guide you guys should just go out and drive one to see for yourself. On the outside, the car looks absolutely brilliant in uh, in uh, the, uh, in black, as as the one I'm driving is with red calipers and the 19-inch wheels. It's just absolutely breathtaking. Um, this is what you actually get when you have a, a recipe that is that has been. Uh, refined over seven generations. Volkswagen really did its job and it's not easy to launch a completely new model that has to abide by the same design rules as six generations ahead of it. However, the designers over in Volkswagen managed to do it and everything looks absolutely okay both inside and out. So, uh, why am I recommending this car? Well, first things first, the price used models depending on their mileage can start as at as low as 16 to 18 grand depending on where you live and at that price tag the gti is the performance bagger bargain of the century the new one is absolutely too cheap <laughs> to pass over the brand new G a brand new gti 2017 model starts at about twenty six thousand dollars you don't have to invest a lot in optionals and uh you basically get a brand new car, a performance hatch, a hot hatch, for $26,000, which is absolutely sublime. So used models go for 16 to 18 grand, and you should be able to pick one up for about 2,000. If that doesn't seem like a, a big enough discount for you, you should always go for a brand new car. Now, I've seen a couple of models being sold for 28,000 which is more than a brand new one, but then again, 
uh, those cars had plenty of options on it so probably their their as new sticker was well over 30 grand but as I said you don't need any gimmicky options anything like that you only need AC manual seats with class on them and you'll be off the engine and the limited slip if you get the competition package will make it worth your while so overall this car impressed me a lot I love it it is perfect for you to to get the, the thrill of driving a performance version and um, I couldn't recommend it anymore as far as the competition goes things aren't all that easy the competition in the hot hatch segment is pretty stiff now I'm not gonna talk about the premium offerings as in the A45 AMG or the BMW uh, M140i but I am going to talk about the Ford uh, Focus ST and the uh, Renault Megane RS as well as the Seat Leon Cupra all three of these cars are absolutely brilliant all of them offer too much performance for the price something you would never even consider saying a couple of years ago but all of them are absolutely brilliant it all comes down to personal choice if you ask me, the Golf has the best interior out of the four uh, and the perfect price to performance ratio as well when you take into consideration reliability. It is a GTI, people know the name, it looks better than the rest in my opinion and uh, it is the choice of the bunch. But then again you could go for the Seat but that's only if you don't live in the US because Volkswagen has smartly kept it out of the US market. That being said, the GTI does receive a 9 out of 10 from me because there's always room for improvement. But I really couldn't fault it for anything more than the, the pedals as you guys probably noticed already. So until next time, I'm gonna bid you a farewell and uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye bye.